Hey, welcome to this course. My name is Happy and I am a software consultant and trainer with more than 13 years of experience. I have given and taken more than 100 interviews in my career. And here I am going to share the top 20 interview questions asked from Web API topic. If you are already giving interviews, then you can easily recognize that these are some of the very important questions from Web API. We will cover similar 20 interview questions in this video. You can see the list of all the questions in the description box. Here is the topic Web API. First, we will cover some basic questions about Web API. This is the list of the basic questions about Web API. The approx duration of all these questions will be around 20, 16 minutes only. If you think that at any point of time any question is too easy for you, then just increase the playback speed of the video. So let's start with the first question. What is Web API? What is the purpose of Web API? Web API, where API stands for Application Programming Interface, provides interaction between software applications. So it's the definition is so simple, it provides interaction between software applications. Now, what is the purpose of a web API? For example, if you want to place an order on Amazon via mobile app or website, the UI is different, but for both mobile app and website, business logic is written in a common web API. So that web API can be here. So that if there is any logic change, then it can be done at only one place, which is then easy to maintain. See the diagram here, whether it's an iPhone app, Android, app android app windows app uh, or chrome any browser their uis are different but their business logic is at some common place which is or which can be web api what are web api advantages over wcf and web services nowadays you are seeing web apis are in trend and they are replacing wcf that's why this question is very important the answer is here, like every business like Amazon, Facebook, Twitter needs both mobile app and websites for their business. And Web API is a better option in that case because Web API act as an intermediary between database and the UI technologies, which can be Angular, React. So it is not tightly coupled with it. So that is the main reason. Web API, which can be written in C Sharp, Java, Node.js are different from the front end technologies, which are like React, Angular. So they are independent. They are not tightly coupled. Now, the first advantage is Web API works the way HTTP works, using HTTP works like get, post, put, delete for all the crude operation. So that is the first advantage of Web API. It works as the HTTP works. Second advantage is Web API is an open source and others are not. WCF is not an open source. So that can be one thing. Web API is a very lightweight architecture and it's good for devices which have limited bandwidth uh, like smart cell phones. So Due to its lightweight architecture, it is preferable as comparison to the WCF or web services. Web API control controller pattern is much similar to MVC controller. Thus, uh, therefore, it is easy to maintain and understand because it is very much similar to MVC only. That's why also Web API is preferred. Next advantage is Web API has a very easy configuration settings as comparison to WCF. So in short, I will say Web API will do each, uh, will handle each and every kind of HTTP request. And HTTP is the most common format nowadays. And it settings are very easy. Like with WCF also you can handle HTTP, but then there will be a lot more configuration settings which you have to manage in your application which is difficult to handle. Before proceeding to next question, here is an announcement for you. If you are looking for a complete course on .NET interview, then here it is. 
This course contains 500 interview questions on topics OOPS, D Sharp, .NET, MVC, Web API, and .NET Core. You will also get this ebook with this course, which will help you in revising the things really fast. If you want to try it, then the course link is given in the description. If not, then it is completely fine. You can continue with this course only. And I wish you all the best for your interview. So let's just continue with the next question. What is REST and RESTful? REST stands for Representational State Transfer. I know uh, it's hard to make sense out of this. So let's try to make it sensible. Uh, forget it. Now, REST is a set of guidelines which helps in creating a system where application can easily communicate with each other. When I say easy, then see how these REST API are doing operations with the help of these simple HTTP methods get, post, put, put, delete. So that's why it's easy. Now see, all the REST operations can be done by these four HTTP methods. Now let's see in detail what are REST guidelines. As I said, REST is a set of guidelines. Before that, I want to clear that any service, whether it's a web API, WCF or any web service, if it follows these guidelines, then it will be a RESTful service. So, any, so what is REST? REST is a set of guidelines. What is RESTful? RESTful, if a API or a WCF is following these guidelines then it will be called it will be called restful api getting my point so it's not like only web apis can be restful service even wcf and web services can be restful full service if they will follow the rest guidelines and the first guideline is separation of client and server the implementation of the client and the implementation of the server should be done independently without knowing about each other. For example, client UI can be developed in Angular, React or in any other front-end technology and it is not dependent on the server technology which can be .NET, Java, etc. So the business logic is separated. This is the separation of client and server guideline of uh, REST. Second guideline is stateless. What is stateless? The server will not store anything about the latest HTTP request which the client made. It will treat every request as new. No session will be maintained on server, no history will be maintained on server. So that is stateless. Meaning server will not maintain any session, history or anything. Third guideline of REST is uniform interface. Uniform interface means you can see, you can identify the re uh, request by its URL. So every URL is uniform and unique. That means by looking at this URL, you can identify what operation it is going to do. Like for example, here it refers to the questions in this example. So we are trying to get the list of the questions from this request. So that is uniform interface, right? Fourth guideline is cacheable. The cacheable constraint requires that a response should implicitly or explicitly label itself as cacheable or non-cacheable. So when you will, when the client will send the request to the web API or WCF for any data in the response, where the data is there, it is all. It should also also be mentioned that whether this response is cacheable or not cacheable. That is one of the rest guideline. And the fifth and the last guideline is it should be a layered system. The layered system allows an architecture to be composed of hierarchical layers. Now, what is hierarchical layers? It is like, for example, MVC is a layered system. So your web API WCF should be a layer system if that wants to be a restful service. So that is the fifth and last guideline of the rest services.
so if you follow these guidelines in your system then it is a restful service and if you are already working in web api then you know that web api are designed to follow the rest guidelines so you know now what is rest and what is restful now one last thing restful again the same thing i'm which i have already told you if a system written by applying rest guidelines or architect architectural concepts it is called restful services and it is possible that you can make a wcf as a restful service is it possible to use wcf as a restful service i think this is the shortest answer possible yes we can develop restful services with wcf also by just following the rest guidelines what are http verbs and http methods so http verbs and http methods they both are the same things first of all here is the table get post put delete these are the http verbs or methods uh, those these methods we have in our web apis first one is get which is used to get the information of a resource in the example orders is the resource and it will get the whole order list so when i say resource it is basically your class or it is basically the resource which this request is asking for so it is asking for this orders list so this get will get the orders list second is the another version of get uh, now here we want not the whole list but is particular item of that list and that is by passing the parameter also with the orders so that is how we will retrieve one record only and that is uh, might be the order number is one two three third we have post which will create or insert a new resource so this will create and insert a new resource in the example you can see a new order be created and submitted to the database with this method so if your method is post then you will submit the uh, order details and when you will click submit this post method will submit the changes to the database fourth one is put which will basically update any existing resource of order one two three so this update request will update this one two three order of the in the database then we have delete it will basically delete the resource of order one two three that means from the orders list it will delete the order one two three from the database so that's all about http verbs or methods how to consume web api from a dotnet mbc application in short web api api methods can be consumed with the help of http client class so in from the interview point of uh, perspective this answer is enough but uh, it's good to know how how it works so let's take an example suppose you want to display the list of facebook employees in your dotnet application and facebook has created and exposed one api for it which you want to consume now now here is the code for it don't worry I, I will break this each line of code and tell you what we are doing here so this is a step by step process first step is create the object of http client like this so now you know why this is the most important step uh, of creating the http client class second the step is set this client object so when you are creating the http client class then this client is the object now set the base address or property for this client object now what is the base address base address will be set like this base url and this is the url of the api which the facebook has given to you so this is the url next step is add the media type that is the request format of the data in which you want the data format in which you want the data for your application right now it is in the code it is json here right the next step 
and the most important step is call the get async method use this get async method which will send the request to find web api resource get all employees so this api and in front of it it will call like employees slash get all employees like here it will add so this get async method will call this and then will set the response in the res object of http response message http response message is the dotnet class which will save the response from the get async method of the http client class so this is the client object and this is the get async method of this object and what http response is doing it is saving the result which is received from this get async method so basically this get async method is responsible for calling the api endpoint and get the data after this code we'll check whether api sent a proper response successfully or not so here in this condition we are checking whether the response which we have received is successful or not and this is the code like this we can check it here then if it is successful the result is successful we will get the result in our on employee or employee response object like this from this result and then we will convert or deserialize this object so that's and the last step is then the variable will be deserialized from the json object to employee object so when we will get the data that will be received in the json string format now we will deserialize it to convert it back into the employee info format which our application will understand so that is the step by step process of consuming any web api in a dotnet application what is the difference between web api and mvc controller so web api also have a controller and in normal asp.net mvc application there is a controller so what is the difference uh, the difference are very simple web api controller derives from system.web.http.api controller class and asp.net mvc controller derives from system.web.mvc.controller class so this is one difference now the main difference is web api controller does not give view support you know web api do not need views so that's why they don't give view support asp.net mvc gives view support because in mvc uh, applications we have views so they provide this view support and the controllers provide the view support so that is the difference between these two now we will cover some questions from authentication and jwt token in web apis this is a very important topic in web apis and here is the list of the questions which interview can ask to you so the approx duration of these questions will be around 12 minutes only so let's start with the first question what is basic authentication in web api authentication means verifying a user who is accessing the system or web api so whenever a client will send a request to the web api server then that request will be authenticated that whether the request should be entertained or not that will be decided by the web api so that is authentication let me show you the postman screenshot see here we have this basic authentication type right and we are passing the username and password with every request to verify the user so in basic authentication the user passes their credentials which are username and password on a post request or get request or any kind of request so that is very simple then at the web api end credentials are ver verified web api will verify these credentials and at last if the credentials are valid then a session will initiate to accept the subsequent request without validating the user again so this is the basic authentication this is the simplest way of authenticating here you are sending your credentials to the web api server web api will check it first time 
then it will maintain a session which will be applicable for the subsequent request and they will not validate the user again and again so this is a very basic as this name suggests this is the basic authentication in web api what is api key authentication in web api now we already know basic authentication in previous question in api key authentication the api owner will share the api key with the users and this key will authenticate the users of that api so suppose uh, there is a api okay and that api owner will share a key with you and this will happen when there are multiple uh, clients possible of that uh, web api so what they will do is they will generate a key and it, they will share it with multiple clients and then in the postman like this you can provide the api key and then api server will authenticate the client request based on this api key there is no username password there is just one api key so that is api key authentication in web api what is token based authentication this is a very important question and nowadays this is the most popular uh, authentication type which is currently in use here is the diagram you can see the process of the token based authentication here this is a four step process let me explain all the steps one by one first client will send the request with the credentials like this to the authentication server okay and this will this will be the valid credentials only otherwise uh, authentication or the uh, the authorization server of the web api will not accept it if this is valid the second step is the authentication server sends an access token back to the client as a response so this access token will be sent back to the client this token will contain nf data identify a particular user and it will also have an expiry date okay so this is the second step then the client application then uses this token to access the restricted resources in the next or subsequent request until the token valid so for any for further requests like once the token has been shared to the client then for further request client will use this token only not the credentials so it will send the token to the resource server of the web api and then if the if if it is valid which is valid because it has been shared by uh, the web api server only then the connection has been maintained and the request will be entertained if the token is expired so there will be as i said there will be an expiry time for the token so if the token is expired then in that case the client application can request for a new token which is by using refresh token that concept we call refresh refresh token so i will not get into the details of the refresh token uh, in this question as that is not so important but you should know how token based authentication works so it is the four step process and this is how it works like uh, sharing the credential by the client then the web api server will share the access token with the client then for any subsequent request client will send the uh, access token with the uh, request and then the transaction will happen between web api server and the client so that is all about token based authentication now uh, just one more thing here oauth is a standard for creating token based authentication and authorization what is oauth now you know token based authentication which we already discussed in the previous question and here is the same diagram of the token based authentication now i will explain what is oauth so oauth is a standard for creating token based authentication and authorization uh, it's a standard right for example if you follow rest guidelines then you can create a restful web api services similarly 
if you follow oauth standards then you will create good token based authentication so it is a set of rules you can say oauth which will help you in creating a good token uh, token based authentication system for your application so again oauth is just a standard which will be followed by token based authentication now there can be many types of token based authentication like jwt all should follow this oauth standard so that is the that is oauth what is jwt authentication this is a very important question in web api and nowadays many web apis are uh, following and accepting this jwt authentication only so let's see what is it jwt authentication is a token based authentication where jwt is a token format remember what is jwt it's a token format so this is the way jwt authentication works this it is the same way the token uh, based authentication work first the browser will send the username and password server will create a jwt with a secret and then it will uh, which is basically uh, we call token only this jwt is a token only and this token will be sent back to the browser then this token will be present in the authorization header remember token will be present in the authorization header when browser will send for any further request so then if the server will try to identify this jwt token with the help of the jwt signature and if it verifies this token then it will send the response back to the client so that is basically jwt authentication that's how it's work and now in next question we will see what are the parts of the jwt token what are the parts of jwt token jwt token stands for json web tokens first thing it is a type of token based authentication now you can see in the screenshot of jwt.io website which will break the encoded jwt token into the decoded form okay so with the help of this we will understand what are the parts of jwt token so this is the jwt token right if you can see it is divided into three parts first one is red one then is violet and then is a light blue so the first part which is the J header okay the first part of the token is header the header consists of basically two things first one is the type of the token so as i said token based authentication can be of many types and jwt is one of them so here with this we can if we will decode this token then it it is giving that okay this is a jwt token in the decoded form so the type we know now is it's the jwt the second part is the algorithm that it is the part of the header again the second part is the algorithm that is used to generate the token right now we are using hmac sha 256 algorithm and this is the short form is hs256 so that is the algorithm which has generated the token got it the second part of the token is the payload now what is the payload so the payload contain the claims uh, there is a set of registered claims for example subject name and they can be more here like issuer expiration date name admin subject so this is like the content of the token which will also help to identify and verify this token so this is the second part which is payload then the last part is signature the signature used to verify that the issuer of the jwt is correct or not so basically the signature is the part when you will send uh, back and forth this jwt token with the server then only with the help of this signature it will identify that whether this token is valid or not 
rest header and payload are not used for it so that is that are the parts of the jwt token in short header payload and signature are the parts where jwt token reside in the request so this question can be asked separately uh, with the jwt authentication token based authentication so let's see where it resides when client will send the request to the server in the request where is the jwt token so the answer is simple in the request header so here you can see the postman tool that the jwt request uh, to jwt token this is the jwt token we are a token which is there in the headers see this is the header and this is the token JWT bearer token. So, where key is the authorization and value is the this is the key which is authorization and value is the token. Now, we are going to cover some more questions from Web API. These questions are not the basic one, but they are the advanced questions from the Web API, but they are still very important. The approx duration of all these questions is around 10 minutes. So let's start with the first question. How to test Web API? What are the tools? So it's a very simple. Right now we have Fiddler, Postman and Swagger are the tools. Uh, right now Postman is the most uh, frequently and the most important one which is mostly used. So but these are the tools and here is the screenshot of the Postman you can see. So this is the screenshot of the postman. What are the main written types supported in Web API? A Web API controller action method can return following types. So controller action method can return something from the Web APIs. So what are the types? <laughs> First is void. Void means it will return empty content, nothing. Second is HTTP response message. It will convert the response to an HTTP message. Third is iHTTP action result. Internally, it will call execute async to create an HTTP response message only. I will tell you the difference between HTTP response message and HTTP action result in another question. Then there can be other types uh, which can uh, you create your own custom return types so these are the return types of the uh, action method of any web api what is the difference between http response message and i http action result so the story is in web api version 1.0 which is the initial version of the web api we have a type called http response message for receiving http response message response message from api call so when you call a uh, api then it will send back some response that response will be saved in http response message right now in web api 2.0 i http action result is introduced which is basically the replacement of http response message it creates clean code code and also simplifies unit testing so uh, ISTTP action result is like uh, it, it, it also do the same thing. It will also uh, save the response which is received from the web API call get a sync method. But it is better than HTTP response message. Now how it is better? Let me show you. Here is the example code of HTTP response message. Okay. The get ID create response and then creating response so this is the a, a very normal get method of http response which will return this http response okay now see this i http action result method isn't it simpler as comparison to this one here this is same product id now if product equal to null it is will just return this not found uh, method which is again new in the web api version 2.0 and if it is fine then it will return the product so lines of code and length of the code and 
readability all is better in this ISTTP action result method. So this is the answer of this question. What is content negotiation in web API? Now this is a very important question. Let me try to explain this with the help of a diagram also. Whenever we consume an API, we receive the data either in JSON or XML or plain text or your own custom format, right? So you will receive the data in some format. It can be JSON or XML, which means the requester, the client one and the risk uh, and the respond uh, responder are aware about the format in which they will send and receive the data. This is nothing but this is called content negotiation in Web API 2. Uh, here you can see in the diagram if the requester client will ask the data in JSON format, then the Web API will return the data in the JSON for format only. But yes, you have to configure your API for returning data in multiple formats. Like it can return, it can, the default can be the JSON one, but your application should be configured so that it can return XML also or any other format. If you think there are clients outside which might be needing the data in the XML or the any other format. So example here also like when you will send this is the screenshot of the fiddler and if you will send the request from the client that okay i need this content type in json format then they will uh, the web api will return in the json format the data in the json format only and this is the json uh, this is the json format string which is because it is here it is json data so that is the content negoti negotiation in web api what is media type formatter class in web api media type formatter is an abstract class from which json media type formatter and xml media type formatter class inherits so here you can see we have this media type formatter which is an abstract class and which is inherited by this base json media type formatter now the question is for example if we send a request to asp.net web api service which accepts value in json format okay so you from client you are sending a request to web api controller which is understanding the format in json format now this class will receive data format in json format right and how it is receiving the data that is receiving the data with the help of this json media format uh, json media type formatter class only so this media type formatter is like a way if you have xml media type formatter then you will inherit from that also you will inherit from media type formatter so that is the class which is media type formatter which is basically provide the basic structure for the json media type formatter and for the xml media type formatter class what are response codes in web api uh, this is very important to know from developer point of view what are the response codes when you will send any request to the web api then you will re receive some response and these response will have some response codes so what is what are these codes so these are the five types of codes we will receive from the web apis let's see them one by one what they actually do one double x that can be one zero two one zero one and that is informational basically so when you will receive this type of code it means that the information is informational that it is just a information it is not so important code but it is informational next one is two double x it can be two zero two two zero one and its meaning is your request is success means suppose you have uh, requested a post request to the web api to submit some details then if you will receive success it indicates that the client request was accepted successfully that your task has been done this is the most used 
code in the web APIs because everybody wants the successful response from the request. Next one is redirection, which is starts from three, three double X, three zero one or three zero two. This means request is not complete. The client must take some additional actions in order to complete their request. So although this is a rarely used code, but it means that okay, this your when Web API will respond with three. 02 code that means your request is not complete you have to send more request one more request to make it complete the next response code is four double x client error this is after the success this is the most important uh, used codes this means there is some error in your request or which api is not able to handle so your request can be incorrect there is something which you the API is not able to handle and that is very important when you will get this error from the web API then you have to again change your request and you have to see whether it is correct or not so that is 401 or 402 normally we use for these response codes the next and the last one is 500 or 500 uh, sorry 501 or 502 which is stands for basically the server errors this means the error is not due to the web api code but due to some environmental settings it means that you have requested something your request is okay the web api code which is handling it it is also okay but the server in which web api is there it is not somehow able to connect to your server from where you are your client from where you are sending the request so that is internal server error you might have heard of so that is five double x great so these are the response codes in web api if you reached here that means you are doing your best for preparing for the interviews once again i wish you all the best for your interview preparation if you like the video then please press like subscribe and bell icon which will motivate me to create more videos on .NET interviews. Thank you so much for watching.